Hey, this is Bob from Insidium. The content repository is a free resource where you can download these example scene files. It's on the Insidium website. Today, we're going to be breaking down one of those scenes and having a look at this Nexus Wind Dunes. In our start scene, then, we just have this spline, this dune spline one, and this is what we're going to use to create the undulations in our terrain. So let's go to Insidium, Terraform FX, and bring in a default TF terrain. Here it is. We can delete the hydraulic erosion operator that came in. We don't need that. We don't need the TF grid. We will use the noise, but we're just going to switch it off for now. And in the TF terrain, object uh, tab we don't need to see this coloration so let's just switch off this display okay and you can see that our um, spline is just poking out the edges of this default size terrain which is 500 centimeters so what we're going to do is use this spline to generate some height let's go to tf terrain add operator and we'll bring in a tf spline let's just put it above the noise and in the spline if we go to the properties tab, there's a link field to drop in the spline that you want to reference. So let's drag in our June spline one. And there, look, we're getting this look. Now we can adjust this spline with, first of all, the radius. So if we make this a smaller radius, you can see that radius crimping in or we can make it a lot fatter. So what we're going to do is make it a lot fatter, but then we're going to shape it using these three curves the fall off gain and radius let's go to that radius first let's put this on say 110 so what we want to do is first of all actually let's demonstrate the curve so we're not going to start with the fall off curve we'll do that one last so first of all we're going to do the radius now this curve the x-axis represents the length of the spline from the start to the end and then this uh, y-axis represents kind of the, the is a multiplier of the radius. So on full, it means that from the tip to the base of the spline, it has full radius of this 110. But look, if I pull down this knot to zero radius, you can see that happening. Look, zero radius at the start. And as we go along the length of the spline, the radius gets bigger. Now, this has shown us a problem. We've got this weird kind of dotting of our height field. And the reason we've got that, if we come up, uh, by default, we have resample selected on TF spline. And what that's doing, it's taking the source spline, it's resampling it, and it's distributing even points along its length. And we can see those even points. Now, we are not going to do that. Instead of resampling, we're going to switch off resample. And now it's going to use the intermediate points of our June spline. If we click on our base spline, you can see, look, the mode is set to subdivided intermediate points with an angle of these uh, thresholds. So if we wanted to make it even more detailed, we could, but let's just leave it as is. Let's go back to TF spline. So obviously we don't want to do that with radius, but what we could do is we could just have the radius tailing off a bit as it comes to the edge of our terrain. So to do that, look, let's put a knot here and a knot here by holding control and clicking and dragging these down a bit. So it's just pointing down a bit at the edges of our terrain. Yep, that's looking pretty good, something like that. Could maybe move that across a bit. Yep, something like that looks good. Okay, so the gain is very similar. It's from the beginning to the end of the spline and this is controlling how much gain we are giving this. So look, if we lower this one down, you'll see at the beginning of the spline, there's no gain. It's not getting um, generating any altitude and it's gradually generating more and more and more as this curve goes up. So again, we could perhaps mirror what we've done with our radius here and put a knot there and a knot there and just bring these down a bit so it's not quite jutting up so much at the edges something like that okay so that, looks, that looks all right now let's have a look though at our fall off curve this is the cool one what we want to do is we want to create a point at the top at the moment this has kind of created this bulbous rounded mound so we're going to take this knot here and we're going to bring it down and you can see look look we're starting to create an edge brilliant that's what we want so let's bring that down like that Let's click this knot, and this one can perhaps come in a bit, something like that. 
and then I don't think we need quite as much elevation here so in the operator tab let's just reduce this gain okay put that down to maybe 40 centimeters all right and there is our basic shape and our camera position is going to be something like this so let's just get the lighting sorted out before we do anything else so we get an idea of, of how this is going to look so we'll go to our TF terrain we'll go to the object tab and by default lighting is enabled what we want to do is we want a much lower Sun so let's reduce the pitch way down yeah and look we're starting to get a really moody environment and we want this part of our June to be illuminated and all of this to be in shadow so we need to change the heading angle until we get the right angle and it's something a little bit like that isn't it let's just dolly out a bit yeah look so all of this is in light in sunshine and all of this is in dark okay so now we have the basics of our dunes we need to add a little bit of detail and we're going to do that remember with our noise operator that we switched off so if i switch this on it's going to take over everything and that's because by default if we go to the noise operator it's set to add so it's adding on top of our spline um, but because there's so much gain in the noise we've kind of lost all of that shape haven't we so we don't need to add what we're going to do is we're going to screen this let's go to screen and we're going to reduce this gain way down to maybe just 0.1 yes so now you can see the effects of that we have got our dune curve but we're screening a little bit of that nice noise detail now that isn't looking too bad with these nice swirls so you could leave it at that or we could go to the properties of that tf noise and we could change these um, settings a little uh, if we went maybe to a wavy turbulence increased the scale a bit and we could just maybe cycle through a few different seeds till we get something that we like something like that's looking pretty nice and it's just the suggestion of a little bit of detail in that sand without it looking too rough okay so that's looking pretty good um, now what we need to do is um, make sure that we have one terrain which is set up for our kind of particle simulation purposes and another terrain set up which is really high settings for our render purposes so that's what we'll look at now so what we'll do is let's just collapse that terrain and we're going to make a couple of copies let's hold control drag the terrain down let go there's one copy do it again two copies and we'll switch off these top two so in the bottom one this is going to be our rendering high poly terrain so let's go to object and we'll go down in the segments if we increase this it increases the polygon count and it increases the detail so I'm going to put this on 1500 and you'll see that in these areas of noise now that we've got that increased polygon count way more detail so it's going to look much nicer in the render but that's not good for particle simulations we want it to be as low poly as possible when we're using this for particle calculations so this is just going to be for render time and what we're going to do let's just make this editable and a cool thing is going to happen so with it highlighted we'll hit c to make this editable and it gets uh, put into a null and if we open this up we have the polygon object which is our geometry uh, that's in point mode let's go to object mode yeah so now we have a polygon object so let's change that name to terrain high poly but also look what happened we have got this really cool light rig that's appeared and it's kind of extracted the light rig settings that we can find in our terrain object and that can be used for any scene so that's pretty cool we can delete all of this stuff we don't need these operators anymore and let's pull those out of that null let's delete the null and then that's our first terrain sorted that's really cool with our light rig so let's do our next terrain which is going to be our low poly version so we'll make that one invisible let's reactivate um, our other copy of our terrain in this one let's go to the tf terrain object we'll switch off the lighting because we don't need to create another light rig we've already got one light rig that can work for everything now so let's switch off that lighting and we will go to the train object tab come down 
And in this one, we're going to put the segments really low. Let's put the segments on like maybe 100. So this is going to have very little detail in that noise now, but the basic shape is pretty much the same. So that's going to work really well for us. And if we hit MB, you can see, look how low a poly that is. And A. Excellent. So let's make that editable as well with the terrain highlighted. We'll hit C. Makes it editable. And this time we'll get rid of the noise and the spline. Because we deactivated the lighting, it hasn't made another lighting rig, so that's cool. And we'll change the name of this polygon to Terrain Low Poly. Excellent. And we can pull that one out and delete that null. And then with this live, let's keep this live set up in case we did want to make tweaks or um, make a different version. So if we select it, hold alt and press G, it groups it in a null, and let's just call that null, we'll call it live terrain, and I'll put that to the right to the bottom, and we can come back to that should we need it. Excellent, so now we have high poly and low poly. The high poly one, we're only gonna use at render time. Now we're ready to start thinking about setting up our particle simulation. So let's get that started by going to Insidium, X Particles, and bringing in an XP system so we can stay organized. In this system, let's bring in our Terrain Low Poly and put it in our Utilities folder here, because we're going to be using that. And you can see, look, we have a default emitter that's come in. And if we hit Play, you can see we've got this square emitter firing out these blue particles. Now, we want to emit particles from our surface of our dunes so in our xp emitter let's go to the object tab and the emitter shape let's change it to object the object we want to emit from is our terrain low poly let's drop that in the object link field now if we hit play we're going to get particles from the polygon centers all right that's obviously not what we want we don't want any speed we're going to use physics and modifiers to move these particles around so let's go to the emission tab and we'll change the speed from 150 to 0 let's put the radius down to maybe 0.5 and in the display options let's change the editor display from squares to dots and we'll just leave it on that for now now if we hit play you can see that look we're getting particles emitting from the polygon center so, couple of things. We want to have quite a natural looking distribution of particles. And the way we can do that is by doing a texture emission. So first, to do a texture emission, we need to make that texture. So we'll do it by um, going to our material manager and we're gonna create a material and we want actually we want a new default material so here's a new default material. this is the old school cinema 4d material and we're going to put that on our terrain low poly and let's double click to get into the material settings we can take off reflectance and in the color we want to create a noise texture so in our texture options let's pull down and bring in a noise the noise we're going to change it to um, something with a bit more detail maybe let's go with a Luca and let's just really crush this by giving it lots of low and high clip maybe something like that okay and what we would like it'd be nice to have some kind of more kind of squashed almost stratified shapes in this and the way we can do that is by just crushing down some of these scales let's put this y scale way down to something like 16 so now we're getting these kind of almost stripes of noise which is looking pretty cool okay so let's just close that one down so now what we want to do is go to our emitter. We can just shut down that material manager. Go to the emitter. And if we go to the object tab, instead of emitting from the polygon center, we can choose to emit from a texture. So let's click texture. And when we do that, we get an extra texture tab appear here. So let's click on there. And it's saying, which texture tag do you want to reference? Let's drag in our texture tag. And at the moment, the emit channel is set to color, which means it'll only emit particles from the brighter parts of this noise. And the color channel is also set to color. 
So if we go forward a frame, and let's just make the terrain invisible, you can see we've got a few particles here. Let's go to our XP emitter, emission tab, and let's bump up this birth rate to, say, 100,000. There we go. So now we are getting particles emitting from that noise. That's pretty cool. And it's obviously much more of a natural shape to that emission. And what we could do is actually animate that noise as well. So let's go back to our material, double click in here, go to the noise. And look, let's give this an animation speed of, say, 0.2. And we're not actually going to... Um, see the um if we make this visible by default you're not going to see the noise actually animating but you can see that the particle position is changing the reason we're not seeing the noise animate is if we go to the material we need to go to the viewport settings and click on animate preview to be able to see that in the viewport and now you'll see that that noise is animating and if we make the train poly invisible we're getting particles being born and they're kind of changing the uh, the position of where those new particles are being born is changing as that noise is cycling through its um its animation cycle okay but now we've got particles all over our terrain and we're emitting a lot and we've got we've got an awful lot going on and we don't need this many we want to keep this emission of particles just to be within this part of our spline and our um, terrain. Let's just hit NQ to hide the materials. We want it to um, just be emitting from here. So we can do that if we go to the XP emitter object tab. We can go to the fall off tab. And by default, it's infinite. So they'll just be born everywhere all over the object. But if we change the shape to sphere, look, we get this control sphere that we can move around and they'll only be born within this sphere. So let's just put it maybe something like that. And now when we hit play, look, we're just getting particles within the sphere. Excellent. So that's working for us. Now, obviously, it's not looking right yet because we've got no movement and no physics in the scene. But we have used the texture to get that really nice kind of natural distribution of new particles being born. And... We have got um, we have got them only being born in the kind of part of our landscape that we're going to be concentrating on when it comes to render time. Excellent. So now that we've got the basic particles sorted, we need to start bringing in some physics to make them move around realistically. So the first thing that we'll do to do that is we'll bring in some Nexus modifiers. We'll go to Nexus and we're going to bring in an NX Wind. And if we just move our camera and lift that up a bit, you can see there we have our wind and it's a fan blowing in this direction on the plus Z. Actually, we want it to be going in the plus X direction. So let's hit R for the rotate tool and we'll rotate this round 90 degrees. Now it's pointing in the right direction. And then in the NX wind, we're going to change the mode from standard to Von Karman. And von Karman has got this really cool, clever bit of maths uh, going on, which means that we get very realistic and nice gusting of wind. Um, so it's going to work really well uh, for us. We definitely don't need 150 centimetres strength, though. That's going to be too strong. Look, you can see that. But the von Karman gives us this really nice gusting. Um, just look on the default settings. It's looking really nice. So let's put that strength down to maybe 20 centimetres. We don't need our particles to be living for the whole scene. Um, let's We'll adjust that, but let's just increase how many frames we've got in the viewport here. We'll put this on 500 frames. And in our XP emitter, emission tab, we will uncheck full lifespan. And let's give it a lifespan of maybe 150 frames with a little bit of variation, 20 frames maybe. Okay, so now we have got a much more subtle begin to the animation of our particles from that wind. That's cool. One of the problems we've got here, it's looking really nice already, but our particles are being born on the surface and then the wind is blowing them underneath that surface because apart from being born on the surface, the particles haven't been told to interact with this landscape at all. Um, 
so that is obviously a problem for us so what we're going to do is we're going to use another nexus modifier to get them to avoid this surface let's go to nexus and we're going to go to nx avoid and nx avoid it says what object do you want to avoid so we're going to put in our terrain low poly we can perhaps reduce our detection distance down to maybe 15 hit play and now we've got this really nice wind blowing our particles and you can see that we've still got that intersection and that's because our particles have been born exactly on the surface of our dunes so what we need to do is just lift them up a little bit so if we go to our XP emitter to the object tab we can go to the emitter tab here and look we can offset the origin let's offset the origin by two centimeters so now they're slightly being born on the top of our landscape and our avoid is preventing them from going through our landscape and now we're getting this really nice animation of our wind particles flying off that dune so that's working pretty well but what we need is to add a little bit more of this kind of turbulent feel and in fact let's just go back to our nx wind we've got our von Karman in default apart from look we reduced the wind strength but look we've also got turbulent settings which gives us some of this swirls and we could let's have a look at this i mean i actually think that we are pretty much all right in the default settings there um we could play about with the scale to get bigger or smaller swirls but actually just in default this is looking really nice the swirls that we're getting from this wind um so i'm pretty pleased with that we could even perhaps there's a chance we could even go down to 10 centimeters in strength you know and have that be even less and we're starting to get this really nice effect of this coming off our dune so for now that's looking really good i'm pleased with that the next step is we just want them to be kicked up a little bit as they're coming across this lip here that's going to look really nice if they kind of they're blown along and then whoosh they're kind of kicked up with a bit of turbulent air as they come up off this lip and the way we're going to do that is with a modifier and we're going to make a pretty cool custom fall off volume so let's get that set up now so first of all let's bring in the physics that's going to make the movement we'll go to nexus and we're going to bring in a turbulence we're going to change the noise type to turbulence let's put the strength a bit higher we want quite a strong turbulence 10 the scale we'll put down to maybe 90 let's just have a look at what we've got now this is affecting particles as soon as they're born so they're lifting too much off this surface at the moment but that's looking not bad it's not quite detailed enough so let's increase the octaves to say four and now we're probably going to see that it's a bit too fine that noise but yeah you get a lot more kind of noise detail there yeah so we can keep some of this fine feel but retain some of those larger swirls that we had before we increase the octaves just by reducing this persistence down maybe to about 27 let's have a look at that yeah that's looking cool um i think arguably it could an be animating a little bit more quickly let's increase the frequency up to say 170 so we're just looking at the shape here obviously we know that we don't want them lifting off at this point we want them lifting off when they get to the lip but that's looking good right so now we can create this custom um fall off and the way we'll do that is let's just come out with our camera what we're going to do is let's just hide some of this viewport furniture actually with the wind let's go and uncheck visible in editor and then with the let's we let's get rid of this particle fall off sphere as well let's go to xp emitter object tab fall off tab and just make it not visible yeah that's better right so what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this original spline that we used in our um terrain generation so let's get our june spline one hold control drag it drop to make a copy let's call this spline two and we'll make spline one 
invisible and let's go to point mode so what we want to do is we want to adjust the points on this spline so that they hug this ridge so to do that we need to go to one of the orthographic views let's hit f5 and we want to go to the right view so let's maximize the right view and then in the display let's do that's going to work but let's uh, let's make this um, x-ray so we can see the spline through the terrain so let's go to the terrain low poly and let's hit x-ray okay and then reselect June spline 2 and then if we hit NQ to hide the material now we're just seeing the terrain right so all we want to do we don't have to be precise here at all but we just want to move these points so they are hugging the ridge of our um, uh, terrain and um, so we can do that using the axis and then we can use it as long as we're in the move tool we can then move these handles and we don't have to be too precise about this it just has to be pretty much in line with the ridge but it doesn't have to be absolutely exact we're not making any uh, geometry here that's going to be rendered it's literally to make a custom um, a custom fall off zone so you can see that i'm kind of wazzing along i'm not being massively detailed but i am trying to make some adjustments so it it does kind of cover quite nicely the profile of our terrain so yeah almost there let's move that one up last one move that to there and then yeah that's going to do for us so let's hit f1 which will bring us back to perspective mode and there you can see look we have adjusted that spline so it's hugging the ridge excellent let's go back to model mode right so what we want to do is make some geometry from this spline and all we need to do to do that is go to x particles generators and we'll go to choose a generator and we'll pick a spline mesher and the spline mesher we can just switch off joins we can switch off vertex colors we can put caps on so it's got a cap on either side and at the bottom of these settings it says what object do you want to make a mesh from so let's drag in our june spline 2 and there is our mesh hit nb to see the lines and you can see that it is on the ridge of our uh, terrain and that's going to work fine if you want it to be a bit more cylindrical we could go to the spline mesher and we could put a subdivision in there which will make it more rounded but it's more geometry which we probably don't need so i'm just going to leave that as a kind of a boxy shape okay and then i'm going to make the spline mesher invisible because we don't need to look at it let's hit na to hide the lines and we could hide our spline too we don't need to look at that and we could make our terrain low poly let's switch off x-ray mode in the basic tab just so it's back to where it was right so now remember we've done this we've made this um 3d geometry it's going to be our field so this turbulence is only going to come into effect when the particles move through our um, volume so the way we do that dead simple we go to the turbulence fields let's just drag in our spline mesher we can select the spline mesher go to the layer and say we want it to be the volume whatever's inside that volume will activate that um, modifier let's make the spline mesher invisible so now we shouldn't get that immediate noise but yeah but as it kicks up off the surface of our dune we're then getting the turbulence affecting our particles and that's giving us a really really nice effect let's go back to our turbulence object tab we could even maybe increase the amount of turbulence there so they get kicked off a little bit more yeah look at them kicking up there up on the lit on the ridge that's really nice excellent 
looking really good. Okay, so now that we've got our basic particle simulation sorted, we need to do um, a few things to set up for a very basic Cycles 4D render. So to start getting that set up, first of all, let's cache out our particles. So we're going to go to Utilities and we will add an XP cache. We'll leave it in default. We're going to cache to external files. This path is just to a folder in my documents. And let's just have a look before we hit uh, build cache. Let's go to our XP emitter emission. And we are birthing 100,000 particles. If we just um, twirl this down per frame. So that's a lot of particles. We'll keep it at that. And let's go and cache. Yep. So we'll go to XP cache. We'll hit build cache. And I'll leave this uh, working through. I'll hit pause. I'll come back to you when it's finished. We'll see how long it took and we'll have a look at the cached particles. Here we are then, that's done. Let's have a look at the stats. If we come down here, it took 500 frames. It took three minutes and 50 seconds and it's almost five gig. And we can scrub through backwards and forwards now and this is all cached. So there's our sand blowing off our dunes. Let's just hit play. And we can see that really that turbulence really working with the fall off um, to get it to kick up off the lip. That's working nicely. That's looking really cool. OK, so now we have got that cache sorted. Let's think about rendering. So first of all, we need to get a good camera position. So let's go to Insidium Cycles 4D and bring in a camera. What this does is it brings in a regular Cinema 4D camera with a Cycles 4D camera tag with some uh, various options. So let's look through that camera. And what we're going to do is position this camera. Now, it's really important to get the lens right. Now, if you imagine, we are kind of shooting this very large sand dune with, with um, particles kicking up from about this angle. So this is going to be a, a helicopter shot, really. And if you're in a helicopter and you're shooting this type of dune, you're going to need a very long lens to be able to get this to fill the frame. So we need to respect that in the camera settings, otherwise it's just not going to look right. So let's go to the camera object. And look, it's just, it's just got a portrait lens, a 35mm lens, so not quite a portrait lens, but it's pretty wide. And we need it much longer than that. So let's try maybe a 100mm lens. And it's going to completely change the way in which this looks. And yeah, look, straight away, that is the look that we're going for, isn't it? That kind of thing. As if we're looking from a long way away, but we've got a really long lens pointing down at this dune. And then we've got something like that. So that's looking very nice. So now let's start getting some rendering happening and we need to put a material on these particles, but we also want to be able to adjust how the particles look. And we do that by using an instance tag. So with the emitter selected, we go to tags, extensions, insidium, cycles, and we bring in a cycles instance tag. And what this does by default, it instances a sphere for every particle. So if we go to our Insidium Cycles 4D real-time preview, we can start the real-time preview and we're not seeing much because it's building all of those particles. So there we've got our dunes. It's very, very overly bright and we can't really see much. So we need to sort some bits out. For a start, we are looking at our low poly mesh here with that noise texture on. So let's just hide that from the render. Uh, everything is too bright. So let's go down to our light rig. Let's switch off the light rig. And now it's completely dark. There's no light in the scene. Instead of the light rig, we're going to use a Cycles 4D sky. Let's go to Insidium, Cycles 4D, and bring in a sky. Let's just close up our system so we can see that. So in our sky, let's go to our sky settings and we could reduce the intensity a bit and we need to reduce the elevation to get that very low pitch, like so morning or evening pitch and the rotation. We need to move that sun round a bit. So we're getting the appropriate shadowing in the areas that we want to be shadowed. Let's just switch off the particles just for a moment. 
so we can have a look at yeah ah look and we're also rendering our spline measure geometry which is for our uh, field in the turbulence so let's make that invisible as well look spline measure spline measure let's hide it from the render right so now we've kind of got the lighting correct at the right angle we're lighting up this part of our dune uh, the intensity could perhaps be a bit stronger now something like that now let's activate our emitter again and we can see that these are way too big these particles look how big these spheres are so we can be more efficient by let's go to the emitter instance tag we can reduce the sphere segments each sphere has got 24 segments it's really high poly for what we're doing we just need we can maybe make it eight segments which will make it much quicker to build all of that geometry and these particles are way too big let's put the size multiplier down to maybe 10 percent yeah so now we're getting a much more kind of wispy look to our particles so arguably we could do with more particles here uh, we could recache maybe with double the amount of particles but to save time let's just make them a little bit bigger for this demonstration let's put it on maybe 16 percent which will make them bigger which yeah look we can see them a lot more easily now in our viewport and we can maybe put a bit of size variation in there of 20 percent so got varied sizes so now we can really start seeing the effect happening and this is without any materials it's just with the sunlight and getting those angles correct for our particles i think that we could perhaps move this landscape over a bit something more like that make it more dramatic looking yeah so now let's make a couple of very simple materials and these are just really going to be kind of box standard diffuse materials we'll go to our material manager we'll go to this little arrow here and go cycles 4d surface and just bring in a diffuse and let's call this one um diffuse let's just call this one terrain and we can double click on our terrain which brings up our node editor let's just make it so it's not full screen bring that size down a little bit something like that and here we just have two nodes our diffuse node going into our output and we're just going to leave it at that but let's just give it a color so we'll bring in just a bit of sandy color and we'll put that on our terrain high poly there we go all right and then we can put a slightly different color on our um, particles so let's hold control and we'll make a duplicate of the train and this one we'll call it particles and we'll just change the color of that let's put it on our emitter yep and in fact just so it's a bit different we'll put a bit of roughness and that's looking really good so we're getting this nice sand blowing off we're getting the nice shadowing this is looking really cool let's make this much bigger in our screen so we can actually see what's going on with our render there we go and this will start cleaning up obviously it's going to be a little bit noisy at the moment but that's starting to look really neat and that is how we can take what is actually quite a simple particle simulation but create this really nice intricate realistic looking dune um, simulation using some of the nexus modifiers and terraform effects for our base terrain